One of the most important things in building a clean room and building a compliant clean room is the design phase of the project. My name is Randy Losey, I'm president of ProFarma Clean Rooms. After the initial site visit, we then start the actual design of the room. In most cases, we're going to end up with USP 797 compliant anti-room, a USP 797 compliant positive buffer, as well as a 800 compliant negative buffer. All three of those rooms are going to be ISO 7 rated. Start with our anti-room. It's going to have 30 air changes per hour. If you look at this picture up here, this picture is actually one of our finished anti-rooms. And if you see, we have a sink with an eye wash. You can see the wave plate over to the right-hand side for the automatic door. You can see the shelving above the sink for uh, your products to clean your hands and so on. Uh, we have our HEPA filter up in the ceiling. We have aerosol challenge ports for the HEPA filter to do the aerosol challenge. If you look over in the corner here, we have a low wall return, which is next to our refrigerator. Again, that's all part of making the room USP compliant. We then go back and we start into the actual buffer rooms themselves. So in this particular case, we'll talk to 797. We're gonna do our positive buffer, which again is gonna be an ISO 7 rated space. 30 air changes per hour at a minimum. In a lot of cases, if the, if the outer pharmacy were in this area, say here was the outer pharmacy area of the room, we could put a pass through here to be able to pass our product through this way out of the room back into the outer pharmacy. On this side right here now, we go into our negative buffer. Our negative buffer again is an ISO 7 space. 30 air changes an hour at a minimum. And again, with the negative buffer, you're gonna to have to doff, you're gonna to have to get take your PPE off when you get out of this room. So again, we've got an auto door going in here, but we're also gonna have a line of demarcation that we have to take our gowns off to, to come out of the room. Uh, again, with the negative buffer, because of the PPE that you're, you're wearing, we're gonna to want to, if at all possible, get a pass-through out of there as well. What we suggest, and, and as many of them as we can, is we suggest putting another room at the top here, which would be your negative receiving room. And what you can do in this room is this basically can be your 795 room. That 795 room can be an ISO 8 room, and it only needs to be 12 air changes per hour. But what you can do in that room is one, you can receive your NIOSH drugs in it and you can store them in there because it's under negative pressure. And you can also, you can repack in that room. So if you have NIOSH drugs that are a powder generating uh, tablet, uh, you can repackage that in that 795 room. Now, what we do with all these to make these positive, negative, and so on, is we have to have our, our pressures have to be the correct way. So what, we, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make this anteroom positive to what we call the ambient space here. So we're gonna make sure our air is positive going that way out of the room. It's always pushing out. The positive buffer is gonna be positive to the anteroom. So again, our air is gonna be pushing out like so. Our negative room, we want to be negative to the ante room. So what we're gonna do is this needs to be pulling in. So now none of our NIOSH, none of our hazardous compounding is going on in your negative buffer, that air is constantly pulling in there. Now everything in this room is getting exhausted out of the building, okay? Whether it's a hood that we may have over here on the wall or whatever, and we'll put a low wall return in this corner, for example, but this and this are all going to be exhausted out. Okay, so again, if you remember what we drew on the board over there, we kind of have the same concept right here. So I have an ante room right here. I have our door coming in. Again, we have a line of demarcation that is going to be our dirty side where we're walking into the room. We have a bench here so you can sit down and you put on your appropriate PPE, which is going to be your booty hairnet feet over, now you're on the clean side of the line. Now we come to our sink, which we showed you in the picture earlier. Our sink is used for uh, gowning up and so on. If you noticed, I have a dimension on here that's showing from the sink to the negative buffer door is four feet, two inches, all right? That needs to be a minimum of one meter from the sink to the edge of 
the negative buffer door. So we're at 4.2 and we always want to show that to make sure the customer knows that we have met our minimum from a USP standpoint. So while we're over here, again, let's talk through the negative buffer. So again, we've got our, our doorway right here. It's an auto swing door, so it'll have a wave plate right here on it. Again, we walk into our negative buffer. As I showed, had, had shown you previously on our drawing, we have a line of demarcation up here, which will be used to come out of our negative buffer to take off, to doff and get rid of your PPE that you had on in your negative buffer. With the six foot biological safety cabinet or a four foot biological safety cabinet, whatever size cabinet you happen to have, you have to be able to clean around that. So if you notice, we position that hood 12 inches off the wall. That gives you the ability to clean all the way around the hood because you can't move that hood because it's hooked to an exhaust that's exhausted to the outside of the building. If you notice our laminar flow hood, however, over in the positive buffer is right up against the wall. Well, that's not ducted to the outside. It's normally on casters, and we suggest that you put it on casters if you don't have them already. Now you have the ability to pull that hood out, clean around it and so on, and you push it back and you have more space in the room. And our reflective ceiling plan, what it's going to do is it's gonna show you where our HEPA filters are in location to the hoods, where our lighting is in relocation to the room, in the room, et cetera. So, for example, in the ante room, we've got two HEPA filters in the ante room here, and we've got two lights in the ante room, all right? So we've spread our lighting out, so we'll have plenty of light coverage in the room, and we've got HEPAs coming down in both sides of the room, and then it's pulling back here, again, away from where our door was drawn over here, so it's pulling all that air back out. Now what we're gonna do is our next drawing that we're gonna do in the design phase is really more for the engineers, and that is to get us to what we call our air balance drawing. Pretty much looks like the reflective ceiling plan that we were showing earlier, except now we're just dealing with the HEPA filters. And what we want to do is provide you, the mechanical engineer, with the volume of air we need per room, the amount of exhaust we need per room, the amount of return air we need per room, to get the air exchanges we need for each particular room and then the overall space. So in the ante room, for example, we have two HEPA filters here. We're showing, to get this ISO 7 room, we're showing two, HEP, two two by four HEPA filters at 270 CFM of air each. So it's a total of 540 CFM of air needed of supply to make that room compliant. Now we go over to the negative buffer, all right? And as I mentioned earlier, you notice same size room, but we've got three HEPAs in there. Well, here what happens is, is we got to exhaust so much air, you've got to turn around a supply enough to be able to pull that air out. So here we have three HEPA filters. We're showing these three HEPA, HEPA filters at 300 CFM each. That's going to give us 900 CFM of supply air. Now we're going to exhaust that air out. We have to get rid of it. It has to go out of the building. Per the requirements of this six foot biological safety cabinet, per the manufacturer, they're saying we need to take out 800 CFM of air exhausted out of the room. Now we have a low wall exhaust out here that we're gonna pull another 250 CFM of air out of. So that's a total of 1,050 CFM of exhaust going out of that room. So if you see the calculation, we put in 900, we're taking out 1,050, so we're a negative 150 CFM of air. So again, we're constantly pulling air into that room, which is what we need to do, and then all that air is getting exhausted out of the building. So again, if we go from here, you can see it's, this is not just throwing up a box and throwing some air in it. Again, if we go back to our very beginning where we started with all this, it's how does it lay out, how does it work for you as a customer, how does it flow, and so on. We say at the end of the day, the architect goes home, the mechanical engineer goes home, the contractor goes home, and we as Pro Pharma go home. But you as the end user, this pharmacy is there for you to function out of, and it has to be compliant. Whether it's Board of Pharmacy, whether it's Joint Commission, this is a compliant facility for you to make work.